Hello, and thanks for joining us today. I'm really glad you could be here. Today, we're talking about what you need to know to decide if you're going to launch a new business and everything you need to know to be able to make that new business successful. How do startups really succeed? What is the formula? It's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. And with us is Gino Wickman. Now, an entrepreneur since the age of 21, Gino has had an obsession for learning and making business and entrepreneurs thrive. At 25, he took over the family business, which was deeply in debt and need of help. And after turning that company around and running it for seven years, he and his partners successfully sold the business. Gino then set out to help entrepreneurs and leaders get what they want from their businesses. So based on his years of real world experience, he created the entrepreneurial operating system known as EOS and a practical method for helping companies achieve greatness. Now, he's personally delivered more than 1,900 full day sessions for more than 135 companies, helping them implement EOS. And he is also the author of the award-winning best-selling book, Traction, Get a Grip, on your business, as well as Get a Grip, Rocket Fuel, How to Be a Great Boss, and What the Heck is EOS, and which has sold more than 1 million copies. Now, Gino is the founder of EOS Worldwide, an organization that helps tens of thousands of businesses implement EOS with the aid of an international team of more than 300 professionals and certified EOS implementers and online, so actually 350 professionals and certified EOS implementers and online support are more than 100,000 companies using the EOS system worldwide. Gino, thanks for joining us today. It is a pleasure to be here, Ty. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, I am too. And you know, what I'm really looking forward to is diving into what you've really been focusing your attention on, uh, which is Entrepreneurial Leap. So this is your newest book. Tell us a little bit about why you set out to create Entrepreneurial Leap. Yeah. And as I share that a little bit of context, you know, I kind of uh, did it in reverse. So I've spent the last 30 years of my life obsessing about helping entrepreneurs with successful companies become even more successful. And now I'm shifting some of my energy to a passion project, which is helping entrepreneurs in the making take a better entrepreneurial leap. And by doing it in reverse, in hindsight, I think it was the right way to do it because I learned so much from these entrepreneurs about how to start a business. And the truth of the matter, this passion project stems from me teaching what I needed the most. And so there's a great quote by Danielle Kenny that says, we teach what we needed the most. And so I think about my 18 year old self who was a mislabeled derelict. I was lost, confused, insecure. Well, I was an entrepreneur in the making. And if I had this content, if I knew this information, I would have had a huge jump start on taking my entrepreneur leap because I really didn't know what I was until about age 29. And so I could have gotten an 11 year jump start. And so that's what this is all about. It's about anyone out there who thinks they want to start a business, who thinks they're an entrepreneur, who has just taken their leap. It's really intended to help them confirm that they made the right decision and show them how to greatly increase their odds of success and become why they were put on the face of this earth, which is a true entrepreneur. Hmm. I've read all your books and, and I love this one. One of the things I love is how you really drill down the characteristics of what makes a successful entrepreneur. You even created a really cool assessment that we use uh, to help our tribe be able to determine, like, do they have those characteristics? So can we dive into that? What are some of the core cut characteristics you found that entrepreneurs have? Yeah, absolutely. And again, in, in the interest of creating context, I'd love to start by just sharing that there are three parts to this content and three parts to this book. And I call it confirm, glimpse, and path. Confirms we, means that we have to first confirm whether or not you even have what it takes. Glimpse is where I show you all of the possibilities because I believe if you can see it before you take the leap, you'll increase your odds of success. And then path is showing you a path, a way, a set of milestones that will help you eliminate half the mistakes you're going to make and increase your odds of success. And so what you're asking now is a confirm question. And so I'd love to go into the confirm part. And so confirm starts with a very strong philosophical belief that you are born with very specific traits if you're an entrepreneur and you are truly either born with them or you're not. Half the world agrees with me, half the world doesn't. I hope I'm wrong to be quite frank, I don't think I am. But the point is there are six essential traits that all true entrepreneurs have and they just can't be taught. 
So let me start by sharing what they are. And as I share them, I just always love for your audience to just kind of scan their body and make sure that they have these six essential traits. Uh, and so they are visionary, passionate, problem solver, driven, risk taker, and responsible. And we can certainly do a deeper dive into each one of those, but I do offer a free assessment on the website, e-leap.com, where you can literally answer 25 questions about yourself, get a score. If you score 90 or higher, odds are pretty darn good that you're an entrepreneur in the making and you have these six essential traits. So in your experience, I think it's really interesting. You find that those are inherited. They're not things that are learned along the way or adapted along the way. A hundred percent. You couldn't beat it out of me if you tried. And it's and it's just again, it's three decades of living and being consumed by this world. And so the one example I like to give is let's talk about responsible, okay? Because everybody's, first of all, two things happen. Number one, people are surprised that responsible makes this list of essential traits for a true entrepreneur. And it's 100% true, um, but responsible. So think about all of the people in your life. You can literally put them in one of two camps. When something bad happens, they either take responsibility or they blame everyone else for their problems and what went wrong. Well, let's now go to a family with four children. And so as you're out there listening and thinking of your brothers and sisters and siblings, how is it that a family of four kids, half of them take responsibility and half don't? And again, as you're listening, you can all relate because you're going, you know what? My brother doesn't take responsibility. My sister doesn't take. So how is it possible? Same household, same upbringing, same parents. It can only be one thing. And again, that's nature over nurture, but 100%. I absolutely believe it because I've seen it so many times. So what do you happen and what happens if you don't have these? Should you even think about starting a business? Should you compensate for the weaknesses that you don't have by bringing somebody else that has those strengths? Yeah. So here's, here's the point because I am absolutely going to break some hearts with this content, but I, I, I'm not doing it because I love breaking hearts. I'm doing it to save lives because my point to you, my caution to you out there is if you've taken the leap or you're thinking of taking the leap and you don't have the six essential traits, you are going to be miserable for 10 years. Okay, but let me take the sting off now and answer your question directly what you're asking, because I get into that in the book and talk about different options, but I can't give someone all of their options. There's so many other paths, but the point is being an entrepreneur is not the pinnacle in life. It's, it's one of many career choices. I believe 4% of the world has what it takes. And, 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 and so the point is this. If you don't have the six essential traits, I teach something in the book called the entrepreneurial range. And so if you picture this arc, where on the right side of that arc, you see the words true entrepreneur, the left side of that arc, you see the words self-employed. The point is anyone that owns their own business is somewhere on that entrepreneurial range. What I'm speaking to are the people on the right side of the range. And so the right side of the range, redlining that range are the greatest entrepreneurs of all time. Elon Musk, Oprah Winfrey, Sarah Blakely, Henry Ford, Walt Disney. The far left, the self-employed, these are one person shows. These are people with a side hustle, uh, someone who's a consultant. Um, so all very admirable. Each owns their own business, but on the left side of the range, if you don't have all six essential traits, odds are pretty good you're not gonna build a company with lots of people, but you can still be self-employed. You can still go buy a franchise. You can still have that side hustle. You can still be that one person show. And so it's still possible because I always like to say, if you have handy skills, you could be a handy man or woman, charge 60 bucks an hour, make a hundred grand a year, be busy forever, and you're free, you're self-employed. That's awesome. But if you do have those six essential traits, you won't be able to stop yourself from building a construction company someday. So hopefully that answers that. Have you found out that the, the, the most successful entrepreneurs have more of these six? Like, let's say that everybody on that right side has all six. Are there levels of each of these? Like, are there extraordinary visionaries, right? So like, if I look at an Elon Musk of the world, like, wow, 
I can't even imagine thinking as big <laughs> as he thinks, right? So are there levels of each of these six that you find that the very most successful have very high levels of each of them? So, so I would say yes, but I also want to be careful because what that's going to do is cause a listener who doesn't have the six essential traits to go, okay, well, I'm just a little bit low on that one. So, you know, I do believe that a, a, an Elon Musk, I mean, look at him in those six essential traits. He absolutely redlines them. But what I like to do whenever I'm speaking to an audience, I have them illustrate that entrepreneurial range in that arc. And, and once I've communicated it, I urge you to just put a dash on the arc where you feel you are from the left to the right. Where do you fall? Because for me, I fall on kind of the, for lack of a better way of saying it, like the 75% mark. I'm on the right side of that range, and I'm kind of in the middle of the right side of that range. Elon Musk, again, he is all the way redlined to the right because he's so extreme in all of these. You know, for me, I don't need to be, be, build a billion-dollar company Put the you know put the massive dent in the universe that he has. Although we're putting a pretty big dent in the universe, so I know where I fall. And, and the idea here is just to know thyself. Just know you. And if you're all the way to the left side of that range, and that's where your dash is on the line, celebrate that. So that again, I'm trying to help save you ten years of hell trying to build what Elon Musk built. When you don't, you aren't cut out to do it. And then the last little point in answering your question, it's okay to go hitch your wagon to a true entrepreneur. If you want to be surrounded by entrepreneurship, you can absolutely join forces and partner with a true entrepreneur. Be integrator to a visionary entrepreneur. Again, join forces. That's another way to be a part of this, build something great, have ownership in a business potentially. Uh, but that's another way if you don't truly have all six essential traits. So, so yes is the short answer, but it's a longer answer because I want to be careful that people aren't going, okay, well, I'm a one out of 10 on driven. I'm a two out of 10. on. That's kind of scary. So hopefully that answers it. Yeah, it is. And I, I, I love it because I think all the way from starting a business to where I am now, I think about trying to kind of feeling guilty that I'm not that guy. Like, you know, and so it gives me peace of mind to know where I am on the range and take ownership of that. So now I'm to a point where it's like I've accumulated all these skill sets and running a business. I could do the billion dollars. I just don't want to. Like, here, here. I look at my friends that want to, and I'm like, they're so ambitious and driven. And my friends are like, you're ambitious and driven. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, they're a whole level above that. And right. so it's interesting. I love how you say that. If take ownership of where you are, because so many of us then look at the Elon Musk of the world and think, feel bad about what we're doing because we're not competing at that level. Yeah. And so I, I, I love that you said that because that's it. It's so freeing the day you just know who you are, know where you are in that range. And then you remind me, I, I just did a talk with 300 speakers, authors, coaches. And, and when I shared that entrepreneurial range, the truth of the matter is, and similar to you where you're this content generator, it's okay to be a one person show and deliver this amazing content to the world and, and make this impact and the reach that you have with podcasts and being an influencer, you can build an empire and literally make millions of dollars being a one person show. You just have to be honest with yourself because in that audience, 90% of them just need to remain one man shows, one woman shows. And then there's 10% that probably have the six essential traits that will build empires because that was me the first five years of creating EOS. I was this one person show. I created this amazing system, wrote this book, was making this impact on my clients and making a pretty damn good living. But I couldn't stop myself from leveraging this and building an empire. And we now actually have 450 EOS implementers all over the world. We're impacting 130,000 companies all over the world. So I, I just can't stop myself. And I really thought I was gonna stop after selling the family business, but I couldn't stop myself. I just had to go build something else. So hopefully that gives a little insight. It is, it's interesting. It reminds me of Sam Walton's book. And he's the same way. He's like, he built five stores and his wife's like, okay, we're good now, right? And think about that. Like if he, he's like, I 
I, I can't like I'm not even capable of stopping here. And then you, you look at what he's built. So it's just interesting where people are on that spectrum and how some are so driven and some are just like, you know, this is my place. And I know friends that are in the on, on, where you're saying and it's the lifestyle we call it. I call it a lifestyle business where they just, you know, they they run their own thing and know to make enough money to have the exact life they want for their family. And they love it. They get to spend all the time with their family, do all the things they want to do, travel vacations. They literally live the exact life they want to live and nothing more or less. So I think it's brilliant to be able to find out where you're on that spectrum and take ownership like that. Yeah. And, and then, you know, in this line of questions that you're asking, and this is kind of dipping into the next part glimpse um, and so you let me know when you want to go there. But one of the, my impassioned pleas in this book is to then get clear, again, know thyself, know what you're built for, know what you're drawn to, because there's so many different types of businesses that you can build. And again, we'll get there when we get there. But in addition to realizing where you are on the entrepreneurial range, then decide how big of a company you want to build, what type of company you want to build. So the point in all of this is there are options. My fear is that we're all being sold a bill of goods, that the only destination for an entrepreneur is to build a billion dollar tech unicorn and cash out for a billion dollars. <laughs> it's okay to build a $3 million heating and cooling company. That's very admirable, hard and respectable. I want to confirm that I am, I have these characteristics. Where can I go to take your assessment? Yep. So it's e-leap.com. It's free. You're going to answer 25 questions. It takes you five or 10 minutes. You're going to get a score. You score 90 or higher. Odds are pretty good. You have these traits. Anything less, you just need to have a talk with yourself. I do urge you to buy the book, study the book. This is a book that is intended to be studied, read, uh, because it is absolutely a journey of self-discovery, uh, but a great place to start is with that free assessment. So we go in, we take the, first, the, the assessment, we confirm that, yeah, this is right for us. We're 90% or higher. Now we've got to kind of figure out next steps, our place, industry, what we should do from there. We got to look at all these possibilities or glimpse at all these possibilities. So let's talk about that. After we've confirmed and we go to e dash leap.com and we confirm with the assessment that we have this 90%, that we are a good fit, that we uh, could really confirm that we have the traits of an entrepreneur. What's the next step? Yeah. And so <clears throat> the idea is once you've confirmed that you are or aren't, but let's pretend we've confirmed that you are, as we move to the second part glimpse, what I'm doing there is I'm doing everything in my power to show you the life. Like I mentioned a little bit ago, I believe if I can get you to see it, your odds soar that you will succeed and I can help you eliminate half the mistakes you're about to make. And so I do three things in this part of the book. First, I share countless real world stories so you can see people who were right where you are and how they built what they built. The second thing I do is I show you a day in the life, both heaven and hell, when it's good and when it's bad. And sadly, most entrepreneurs are living a day in hell and not heaven. But the point in that is I teach the eight critical mistakes that most entrepreneurs make. And we can come back, back to that in just a second. And the third thing I do is what we touched on just a minute ago. And that is I show you something called my biz match that helps you understand all of your options as an entrepreneur. So you can decide the business that's perfect for you, right for you, what you're drawn to, what you're genetically encoded to build. And so that's kind of the high level on all of that. And as we, as we go into wherever you want to go on that, there's another little contextual point I want to share. And that is something I call the lifeline of an entrepreneur, because your audience your audience is made up of people all over this lifeline. And so the lifeline, if you picture in your mind, at the beginning of that lifeline is, is an entrepreneur in the making, scratching their head, thinking about starting their business. At the end of that lifeline is the entrepreneur that sells their thousand person company hypothetically. Okay. And so if you can picture that in your mind, well, I created this entrepreneur leap content for an entrepreneur in the beginning of that lifeline from the day they're scratching their head to the day they start their business and generate their first dollar. Well, I created EOS and wrote the book Traction for an entrepreneur on that lifeline who has 10 to 250 employees, typically privately held. So if you can picture that in your mind, the, the entrepreneurs out there that are at that level, you need traction, you need EOS. And we might touch on some of that, who knows? 
But what's important to understand is there's this no man's land that I just articulated in that lifeline where it's that startup phase where you start the business, generate your first dollar, and then get to your 10th employee. In that no man's land, what's important is there are absolutely many startups using the Entrepreneur Leap content to do a checkup on their startup to make sure they're doing everything right. And there are some startups that are sophisticated enough to bring EOS and traction in in the startup phase. So I say that so that for your audience, because again, your audience is all over that lifeline, I want them to know where the appropriate content is for them. Because as we now go to Glimpse, anyone who's in the startup phase, Glimpse is a great opportunity to do a checkup on yourself to make sure you're doing everything right. And so with that, I'll pause. Um, where do you want to go in terms of uh, Glimpse content? What jumps out at you? You know your audience better than I know your audience. I'm a finance guy and I like algorithms. So this my biz match, I think is very interesting. Um, so what's what's the algorithm behind this? Like when you're looking to see what business or in what match of industry might be suited for you, what kind of things are calculated in there? What kind of things are we taking into account? You bet. So it's there's there's three aspects to this. Okay. So there's deciding the industry, there's deciding the type, and then there's deciding the size. And so when we start with industry, industry is first you deciding the industry that you're drawn to. There are hundreds to choose from. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, this is a, another free tool on the website, My Biz Match, uh, e-leap.com. Fill it out in 20 minutes. You're going to get an answer, but it's showing you all those industries. You're clicking a bunch of buttons in terms of what you're drawn to. It's okay to pick multiple industries. But the idea is you got to see what you're drawn to. And so for me, it's education. I, I don't know where it came from, but since I was 20 years old, I've been drawn to education. I love teaching people. And so that's the industry I chose. Again, there's hundreds to choose from. From there, the second aspect is type. And there are three types. So once you've chosen your industry, next is to decide, number one, are you a product or service entrepreneur? Those two businesses could not be more different. So do you love selling products or do you love selling services? Full disclosure, I, I have utter disdain for product businesses. <laughs> Inventory scares me. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. I freak out at the sight of a million dollars in inventory sitting on a shelf. It's just not my thing. I have tons of product entrepreneurs that are clients, uh, but it's just not my thing. So for me, I choose service. I love selling the invisible. I love selling services. You got to decide which one you are. The second type is, are you a B2B entrepreneur or a B2C entrepreneur? Those are very different marketing and sales processes. So again, do you love B2B selling to businesses, business to business, or do you love B2C selling to consumers, business to consumer? I love selling to businesses. I love selling to CEOs. That's what I'm great at. That's where I shine. That's where I'm masterful. I love having a handful of clients on the consumer side. There are people I just love having 10,000 customers. So what are you drawn to? What do you love? And then the third is to decide, are you high price? high value, low volume, or are you low cost, commodity-based, high volume? Both work. It's really hard to be both though in the same company. And so for me, again, I, I wanna be the highest price in town. I wanna provide the most value, high quality, low volume, but high volume, low cost, commodity-based. I have a client that sells light bulbs. They literally make pennies per bulb, but they sell millions of light bulbs. And he loves it. I could not imagine being in that business. But for him, that's what he's drawn to. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's where he shines. And then the third aspect <clears throat> is size. Once you've decided the industry you're drawn to, once you decide the type of business you're, you're drawn to, what size? And this takes us back to that entrepreneurial range. Do you want to just build a million-dollar company with eight people? Or do you want to build a billion dollar company with 10,000 people? So you have options is the point. And like I said earlier, nothing wrong with building a $3 million heating and cooling company, but size is just as important. And this is that freeing thing, because what I realized for me, 50 to 200 people, that's kind of my sweet spot. I, 
I need to be able to touch and feel and see and know all the people. And so when I sold EOS Worldwide, <clears throat> we were somewhere between 100 and 200 people. And, it, and for me, it just wasn't as fun anymore. It got so big. So that's kind of my sweet spot. And that's what I've learned. I have a friend that he's great at building and selling $10 million companies. He tried to build a $100 million company and the whole thing crashed and burned. So you are genetically encoded. You're built for something. And it's okay to give yourself permission, like I said earlier, it's not all about building a billion dollar tech unicorn. You have lots of options. Where can we access my biz match to really get the best assessment of which of these three to focus on or which of these three is, is us? Yep. Yeah. So e-leap.com is the website. Again, it's called my biz match takes about 20 minutes. You're going to click a bunch of buttons and you're literally going to get a result. It's going to tell you the industry or industries, <clears throat> and then obviously type and size. And the whole idea is, let's pretend you're a startup and you literally started and you're just doing a checkup on yourself to make sure you're doing everything right. Then this is an opportunity to just make sure you're in the right sweet spot for yourself. It's just a great checkup. If you're scratching your head, thinking about the right business to start, this is going to help you decide the right one for you. It's also going to help you decide to, the industry to start to research, maybe even mentors to start to go find that are in that industry with that type of business, with the size of business. So e-leap.com is where you can find my biz match and it's free. What about these mistakes? You mentioned eight critical mistakes that you found in all of your experience in working with all of the entrepreneurs you have. Um, what, are, what are these eight critical mistakes? Yeah. And, you know, on this, I talked about the day in the life, both heaven and hell. So every entrepreneur is living one or the other, and most sadly are living the nightmare. And, and my goal for you is that you live the dream and it's possible. And so over the last 30 years with the entrepreneurs that I've helped, our clients that come to us with EOS, they, they, they tend to, during the startup phase, made some or all of these mistakes, but these are the most common that a startup makes where that entrepreneur ends up living the nightmare, the day in hell. And so what I always like to do is just give you a quick overview. I'm just gonna read through all eight and then you know your audience better than I do. Just pick one or two that jumps out at you, but here are the eight critical mistakes. Number one is not having a vision. Number two, hiring the wrong people. Number three, not spending time with your people. Number four, not knowing who your customer is. Number five, not charging enough. Number six, not staying true to your core. Number seven, not knowing your numbers. And number eight, not crystallizing roles and responsibilities. Hiring the wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> that, one, that, that one gets picked a lot. <laughs> So, so let me uh, let me share a couple of things on that, and we can certainly go back and forth on this. But what, what the, the mistake, what happens almost all the time, is the entrepreneur takes the leap, starts their business, starts to generate some revenue, reaches capacity, needs to delegate, and need a body. And so what they do is they grab the closest body to them. And so they hire their brother, sister, mom, dad, neighbor, cousin, best friend. And they just grab that body, hire them into the organization and just keep running. They filled that hole, if you will. And then they need another body and they do the same thing in another body. And all of a sudden they find themselves with 10 people and six need to go. Okay. And so a lot of times our clients come to us, there's on average a 20% turnover with our EOS clients because there's a little bit of house cleaning that needs to be done because the way to solve this. So here's the beauty. I'm trying to show you the mistake so you can avoid it because you absolutely can avoid every mistake. And the way you do that is once you reach capacity as an entrepreneur and you need a body, you need to hire around two very specific things. Number one, only hire people that have the same core values as you, i.e. your company. But quite frankly, your core values are your company's core values and vice versa when it's little old you building that business from the ground up. And so you've got to go through the discovery exercise of what are your core values. And so I talk about that in the book, certainly. So then you just want to find people that have those core values and you'll get it right 90% of the time. So just be really clear. Part two is you've got to hire for the job. Don't hire to get a body in there to pick up all the pieces 
get really clear. So I always urge every entrepreneur, even though there's one of you, is have an org chart and illustrate those seats so that everyone knows where the seats are. You know where the seats are, marketing, sales, operations, finance. And then we, I don't know if we'll get into this or not, but who's the visionary, who's the integrator? Well, it's, those are all you, but when it comes time to bring that next body in, what do you like to do the least? What's squeaking the most? And so hire talent to fill one of those seats to free you up to focus on where you excel. So hire on core values, hire on skill set for the specific seat you're trying to fill, and you will greatly increase your odds of hiring the right people every time and not having to clean up a mess when you get to 10 employees or 20 employees. Mm, really great advice. Um, what about core value establishment? You know, I've always wondered, do you like, and when I look at our company, our core values were kind of established over the first few years. Uh, we kind of became who we became. But then I wonder, should you start from the beginning with core values? Because I agree with what you say. I mean, we hire and fire completely based on core values. It is how we make those decisions, almost solely how we make those decisions. Here, here. Did they violate our core values? Are they a good fit with our core values? Yeah. Uh, but we that's hard when you don't have core values. Exactly. So I would suggest a couple of things. Let's go back to that entrepreneurial lifeline and that entrepreneur that has 10 to 250 employees where they already have people, they've got years of experience. When we take them through the discovery exercise with EOS and traction, it's, it's a little easier to do because there's a specific exercise where we're doing it with the leadership team. And so that exercise is laid out in traction. Well, when you're that startup entrepreneur and scratching your head, what I urge in this Entrepreneur Elite book is that you discover your core values as early as possible. Worst case, you've got to discover them before you hire that first employee. I would suggest two things. Number one, I believe you've got to, if it's just you starting out, getting a few months or years under your belt of building your company before you hire the per first person is gonna help you get a little clearer on your core values because you've gotten your ass kicked a little bit, you're a little scrappy, you start to see what's important to you. But when you're ready to discover them, nonetheless, and if it's just you, there's, um, there, there are these core value cards by Think to Perform. You know, it's a few bucks to buy a deck of cards. There's 52 core values. If you don't know how to do this, it's an amazing exercise. I've taken at least 100 people through this process, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and, and you go through an exercise and out pops your three to seven core values, personal core values, which ultimately become your company's core values. So that's a great way to do it. But I also walk you through it in this book a great way for you to do it as well. So those are the ways to do it. But bottom line is it start to think about your characteristics, your the stuff that rubs you the wrong way, the non-negotiables. There's only three to seven, less is more. If you can get it down to three, amen and hallelujah. But it's really knowing yourself and what's really important to you. And so, you know, a couple examples, uh, grow or die is one of mine. I want to be around people that just want to constantly grow. They don't like stagnation. Another one, I call it humbly confident. I only want to be around humble people, certainly confident people, but I abhor arrogance. And then another one is do what you say. I, it makes me crazy. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it as extreme as I can when somebody does not follow through and do what they say. So, so as I look back on my life, those are the things that drove me crazy that led to me being clear on what matters most for me. And so you, that's the same exercise you should do for yourself. One of the things that I see a lot of business owners do is they send another customer. They don't have a customer avatar. They don't know who the customer is. And they waste a lot of time and money trying to sell wrong. The messaging is wrong because they don't understand their audience correctly, or they're trying to sell to the wrong audience. And what I've realized is that through the years, it's fairly easy for me to know my audience because I can go to YouTube, right? I can go to all these places that track the data. And I have so much content out there that they tell me, hey, here's the, the men, women, here's the age group. But when you're getting a business off the ground or you're in that startup phase, you don't know that stuff. So what advice do you give on how to figure out who your customers are really drill down that customer avatar? Yeah, for sure. So, so what you're touching on is uh, the eight critical mistakes, mistake number four, not knowing who your customer is. And this is probably a great segue into path because when I share the critical mistakes, then we start to get into how to avoid and solve those. 
So if, if you're ready to go there, let's jump to path and I'm gonna answer your question because when we get into path, um, like I said, I show milestones on the journey to greatly increase your odds of success and eliminate half the mistakes that you're gonna make. And one of the tools I teach there is called My Vision Clarifier. And we won't go into great detail just yet on that. Um, and if you wanna take us there, we can go there. But one of the things in My Vision Clarifier is you're gonna answer eight things about the company that you want to build. And you're just gonna fill in the blank. And one of those is answering the question, my ideal customer is, okay? And, and so this is how we then solve what you're talking about because determining your ideal target market as you start your business is vital. And it is defined by three things, demographic, geographic, and psychographic. Who are they? Where are they? What are they? And you need to know your customer better than they know themselves. And so who is the demographic you're going after in the world? And so when I started EOS, my ideal client was that 10 to 250 person entrepreneur. Just like with Entrepreneur Elite, the ideal person for that is somebody who's scratching their head, thinking about taking the entrepreneurial leap. That's the demographic. Geographic is what is your reach going to be? Is it your city? Is it your state? Is it your region? Is it your country? Is it the world? What is your reach? There's nothing wrong with just focusing on a small area, small region, small city, again, whatever it's gonna be, but know that geography that you're going after the geographic. And then psychographic is most important because this is getting really clear on how your customer or client thinks, what's important to them, what are their hot buttons? And so again, as an example, an EOS client for us, the ideal client is someone who is open and honest, willing to be vulnerable, entrepreneurial, respectful, appreciative, growth oriented. These are the psychographics that is our opportunity to shine when we find somebody like that. And then obviously on the entrepreneurial leap side, it's somebody who has those six essential traits, those characteristics, those traits are what define the psychographic of our ideal customer. And so I urge you out there, get really clear on the demographic geographic and psychographic. And again, I talk about it in this book so that you know who you're going after in the world. When you know your client that well, literally the messaging, literally the colors you choose, everything, all of your sales and marketing efforts need to be designed and aligned to get a reaction from that exact type of person because you don't need them all. You shouldn't want them all. And if you try and get them all, you're going to put yourself out of business. You know, if we go to e-leap.com, we grab the My Vision Clarifier tool that helps us. What else should we be doing to really get on the right path to be able to take the mistakes that we've learned or the mistakes that you've revealed, overcome those? We now know what we're doing. We know the industry. We know the size of business that we want to build. What else should we be doing to get on the right path to build a successful business? Yeah, great. And so now we're fully into path and I'm going to give you a really big, robust answer. And then you tell me where you want to drill down on this and just hang in there for me as I do kind of a 90 second riff on all that is included in path. And what I'm going to do is just touch on the chapter outline so you can see high level of what's there. And I, and I just call these milestones on your journey, wherever you are, these are the things that are going to come up. And so in the first chapter, I talk about college or not, if you're at an age, where you have to make a decision whether you're going to go to college or not as an entrepreneur in the making. I present all the facts, all the data. At the end of the day, it's simply a choice. Um, and you'll decide about half go, half don't go. It's perfectly fine, whatever you decide. Next chapter is I talk about how to discover your passion, which is vital. The number one reason you're going to succeed as an entrepreneur is to have deep passion for what you're doing. It's the only thing that will get you up after getting knocked down multiple times on the journey. The next chapter, I talk about how to find a mentor. Having a mentor will greatly increase your odds of success, kind of like a speed pass. Next chapter, I talk about the power of 10-year thinking and getting your mind to slow down. It's crazy. Once you shift to 10-year thinking, you make better decisions. There's a peace and a calm that comes over you, and you ironically get there faster. The next chapter, I then share 10 disciplines for increasing your odds of success. And again, we can go into those, and you could pick one or two there. Next chapter, I then talk about the nine stages of building your company, and then I bring it all together with the last chapter that is a lifetime of growth, learning, and motivation, and so I share the books you should read, the podcasts you should listen to, 
uh, videos, blogs, and all that wonderful stuff, and just some kind of general words of wisdom. So that's the high level. You tell me what jumps out again, like I keep saying, you know your audience better than I do. Everybody has to grab the book because they're saying here, we're only able to dive into one or two out of like 10 of these different concepts. And your book had a ton of really valuable resources that I'm into now um, as a result of reading it. But I'd like to learn a little bit more about these disciplines that you found. Yeah, you bet. Uh, so again, I'll do the same thing, just kind of give you the high level of the eight disciplines. And then you tell me one or two that you want to drill down on. Uh, so here are the eight disciplines for increasing your odds of success. Number one is to clarify your vision. Number two, decide if you are a partner person, vital. Number three, know that the bigger the problem you solve in the world, the more successful you will be. Number four, get feedback from customers and clients early and often. Number five, know that your first plan will not be your final plan. Number six, work hard, really hard. Number seven, take criticism and doubt from others with a grain of salt. And number eight, see it every night. So when you talk about criticism and you talk about this being humble earlier, give me a little bit more insight there. Because I think the type of personality that's really good as an entrepreneur in our infancy, we're not really good at taking criticism. Like for me, that's been a learned skill, although I don't know if a lot of other entrepreneurs it's natural or not. Yeah. And that's why I put this in here as a discipline, because, you know, it's, it's, there's a really good chance that if you have these six essential traits, um, you're a bit charismatic and you probably have a big ego, which, you know, I urge you learn how to control your ego. Egos, we all, ego's helpful, uh, but also very dangerous. But with those two things, you probably are really bad at taking criticism and doubt. And it, and it, you know, hits you hard, you know, and, and I experienced this, you know, so like whenever I want to humble myself, I go read one of my one star reviews on Amazon. <laughs> so, so literally there's, I'll have a thousand five star reviews and I'll see one one star review and I'm like obsessing about the one star. So anyway, take criticism and doubt with a grain of salt. And so here's what I mean. First of all, as an entrepreneur in the making, you're going to start your business. You're going to get feedback from people and you're going to hear negative things. And, and, and a lot of the time it's gonna be from family members, the closest people in your life, and you gotta take it with a grain of salt and you're gonna hear customer feedback. And so the whole idea is your job is to take in all of this data and this feedback and glean what is important. Because if you take all of the advice, all of the opinions, all of the criticism and all the doubt, you will twist yourself in a knot. Because another way of saying it is if you go read 100 business books and do everything in all 100 business books, you'll be out of business in six months. So you got to pick the philosophy, the, the belief that so, so you're going to make a decision. The next thing I always love to share this story. And I've not been able to validate um, where I got this from, but I, it's been confirmed that it's true. Of, I've had fact checkers, so I can't tell you the incredible entrepreneur that would do this, but this gentleman put together what he called a board of very intelligent people. And so he would have this board of 10 and he would present his ideas to this board of 10. And his discipline was if seven out of 10 hated it, he knew he had a great idea. If 10 out of 10 hated it, he knew he had a winner. So, so the point is, and I can't tell you how many people told me I was crazy with what I was going to build with EOS. So people have their opinions, they have their criticism, they have their doubts, and most of it is wrong for you. And so you've got to glean what's right for you and all of that, because you need to hear all of it. It's all vital, but now you've got to filter and disseminate the 10% out of all of it that you're going to use that makes sense. Hopefully that answers that. That does. I love that. 
I, I, I will often joke that, especially in my younger years, especially starting a business, that's the way it was. I'd ask my friends their opinions and do, do the opposite. And it would drive them crazy. And I'd be like, look, if I ask a bunch of people and they all tell me X, then that's the average decision. And I don't want to be average, right? I want to go. So I'll go a different path, wherever it takes me. So that, that I can really relate to that. What about long-term vision? I, I suck at that. Like I can think, I can't even think 10 years ahead. And it, it's almost stressful for me mm -hmm. to try to think 10 years ahead. I could do one year planning, three year, five year on a stretch. But thinking 10 years ahead is almost increased anxiety and stress. So how do you get good at that? Yeah. And as I say this, you know, please understand the Japanese, they think in hundred year time frames. Dan Sullivan, one of my greatest mentors, urges you to think in 25 year time frames suggesting is a big nothing compared to those two yeah. uh, groups of people but you're right and i love when i'm teaching someone coaching someone and the neurons in their brain are incapable of thinking the 10-year time frame and they literally the wiring you can just see the smoke coming out of their ears <laughs> so my, my impassioned plea is it's a muscle you build and it is absolutely powerful. And so again, it's a discipline we're talking about. It's a muscle you build. And so worst case, if you're only capable of thinking out a year, push it to two years. And then when you get master that, push it to five years. And when you master that, push it to 10 years. But all I can tell you is from age zero to 35, I was the same way. I thought today, this week, this quarter, maybe this year, now, 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 I wanted everything now. At 35, when I discovered this discipline and applied it to my life and shifted to tenure thinking, you know, like I said earlier, all of a sudden time slowed down. There was a peace and a calm that came over me. I made much better decisions and I literally got there faster. And if you shift to thinking in tenure timeframes, you know, so I always laugh at a 21 year old out there listening, you know, thinking, you know, how do I build a billion dollar company by the time I'm 23? And I'm like, you're 21. By all measures, at a minimum, you have six good decades left. You have six 10 year time frames left. You can accomplish anything in 10 years. If you're 50 years old, at a minimum, you have two good decades left. You've got two great 10 year periods left. So it just shifts your thinking and if every decision you make is a 10-year decision, it's incredible how much better your decisions are. It's just a patience that you learn that everything speeds up because every people decision is a 10-year decision. You know, every, anyways, I could go through the whole list, but, but it's a muscle you build. It's a discipline. It's a neuron wiring, and it's quite powerful. You know, powerful stuff today. Where, uh, where can everybody go to learn more? Uh, e-leap.com is the website that is the epicenter of all things entrepreneurial leap you will find a wealth of free content there uh, we put out a video every week we write an article every two weeks um, you know in these tools that we touched on today so the first one in confirm was the entrepreneur in the making assessment the second one in glimpse was my biz match and the third one in path was my vision clarifier we call those three tools the one two three roadmap and so if you go to the website click on one two three roadmap in an hour you can fill out all three tools and it will give you an absolute clear plan to start a better startup so wealth of information there you can get a free chapter of the book and then also, if you have interest in becoming a collaborator, and Ty, you are one of our collaborators. We have 115 now, 116. Um, and th these are people all over the world that want to help entrepreneurs in the making, want to teach this content to the world. And what we do is we join forces. I give you my content for free, and you go teach as much or as little as you want, just like what you're doing to help people in the world. And so if you're interested in being a collaborator and you have a passion for helping entrepreneurs in the making, Click on the Become a Collaborator button, but e-leap.com, that's the epicenter of all things entrepreneurial leap. You know, thanks for joining us today. It was an absolute pleasure, Ty. Appreciate you, brother. All right, so by listening and, 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 and seeing this, the first thing you really want to do is you got to go to e-leap.com. Um, I've been blessed enough to have an opportunity to read all Gino's books, and I can't tell you how many things I've implemented, uh, including EOS, or how much money it's made the organization, but I can tell you it's substantial. It's a lot. Um, Entrepreneurial Leap is fantastic. One of the best, well, probably the best roadmap 
book I've ever seen of how to figure out if you're the right person for an entrepreneur and, you know, what to do to figure out uh, the right path forward, the industry and how you set yourself up and then the actual path to succeed these three steps. Um, so again, if you want the one, two, three roadmap, which you should go to e-leap.com, that's e-leap.com and take advantage of the entrepreneur assessment. Take a look at the characteristics of who you really are. Um, if you've already launched a business, it's going to give you insight of where you may be struggling and where your weakness is and how to compensate. Uh, but it really gives you the best assessment of whether you're the best fit to be at that right end of the scale, that high end entrepreneur. Take my biz match, find the right place for you where, again, you're not living in hell, you're living in entrepreneurial heaven, which we all want to be. And make sure you take the My Vision Clarifier as well. And then make sure you get down the right path to success. Avoid a lot of the mistakes that the entrepreneurs make and create the right disciplines to be successful. There's so many things here and all these tools and resources are at e-leap.com. I also really highly suggest you become a collaborator because as you should grow a bigger business and build a tribe, then your tribe is going to want to know how they do the same thing. And that's why I became a collaborator because so many people ask me these questions of where do I start? How do I choose my right business? And I don't have any of the right answers. And then I look at Gino's resources. I look at his book and it has all of those answers. So really look at being a collaborator. There's no cost to do so. You just have to have a passion of helping other entrepreneurs um, and be around people that are just getting a business off the ground or already have. And you can give back, contribute, and help them as well. All of it happens on one place, which is e-leap.com. So make sure you check out e-leap.com and you have to get the Entrepreneurial Leap book. It is fantastic. And again, we scratched the surface on so many concepts in there uh, that will give you everything you need to create a very, very successful business. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you visit e-leap.com to get more information. Take care. Have a great day.